Hey everyone, welcome to Lizzie's Little Library and the Newberry Project. Today's book is the 1971 winner called The Summer of the Swans by Betsy Byers. This is yet another book I was always aware of, but I had just never read it. Uh, not for any particular reason, I just, I was reading other books. I actually have three other books by the same author. I believe they're part of a set, like a three book trilogy. None of them were Newberry recognized. I will get to them eventually. Uh, interesting enough, um, which uh, really has nothing to do with this book, it's just kind of interesting. The author just died in 2020 at 91 years old. So unfortunately, I'm going through the era of books at this point where some of the authors are still alive and those that are seem to be dying pretty regularly, I guess. I hate to say it that way. What was it? Last year, two years ago, I found out Beverly Cleary died. Actually, my brother told me, and I was just absolutely devastated. She was uh, like Betty White, one of those people that you just kind of assume is always going to be there forever. So, again, that is uh, really nothing to do with this book. It's just rambling. So, anyway, this is, yet again, a story of a child growing up. So I want to actually start this with reading the first paragraph. It says, Sarah Godfrey was lying on the bed, tying a kerchief on the dog Boise. Hold your chin up, Boise, will you? She said as she braced herself on one elbow. The dog was old, slept all the time, and he was lying on his side with his eyes closed while she lifted his head and tied the scarf. And this better not be another book where the dog dies. I can't handle those. Sarah has an older sister named Wanda. On page three, she actually has some really good advice. Sarah is bemoaning the fact that she has big feet. And Wanda says, people don't notice things like that. Sarah doesn't believe her. Wanda says, no, they don't. I have perfectly terrible hands. Look at my fingers. Only I don't go around all the time saying, everybody, look at my stubby fingers. I have stubby fingers, everyone, to make people notice. You should just ignore things that are wrong with you. The truth is, everyone else is so worried about what's wrong with them. And then Sarah interrupts her, but very solid big sister advice. I tend to give my children the same advice when they're super stressed out about doing oral presentations. I tell them really the only one paying attention is the teacher. Their classmates are either worried about their own speeches or they don't really care. Anywho, we also learn that Sarah has a classmate named Bull Durham. And for what it's worth, the movie Bull Durham was not released until 1988, almost 12 years after this book. On page seven, and this review is kind of different, uh, this is because there's a lot of, a lot of dead text evidence that I want to read. So this is a paragraph on page seven. It is uh, Sarah complaining. She says she could never be really sure of anything this summer. One moment she was happy, and the next, for no reason, she was miserable. An hour ago she had loved her sneakers. Now she detested them. And that kind of sounds like puberty to me. So in the next chapter, we learn that Wanda is 19 years old. There is also a 10-year-old brother named Charlie, and they all live with Aunt Willie because their mom died six years ago. There is no mention of dad. Given that the book was written in the early 70s and lacking a more accurate, more specific diagnosis, Charlie is retarded. So on page 38, finally, and this is a very short book, it's only 140 pages. On page 38, we learn that Sarah is 14. And on this page, she gives another nice description of her life and her mental state. She says, up until this year, it seemed, her life had flowed along with rhythmic evenness. The first 14 years of her life all seemed the same. She had loved her sister without envy, her aunt without finding her course, her brother without pity. Now all that was changed. She was filled with discontent and anger about herself, her life, her family, that made her think she would never be content again. And paragraphs like that really make this book seem more appropriate as a young adult book as opposed to a children's book. 
But a few pages later, on 42, Sarah is once again bemoaning her life and her peers. And Wanda has some advice that I thought was really funny. So it's that half of 42 and the very beginning of 43. Uh, Sarah, well, if you could see some of the girls in my school, you'd know what I mean. They look like models. Their clothes are so tough. And they're invited to every party, every dance, by about 10 boys. And when they walk down the hall, everybody turns and looks at them. Wanda, oh, those girls. They hit the peak of their whole lives in junior high school. They look like grown women in eighth grade with the big teased hair and the eyeliner. And by the time they're in high school, they have a used look. Sarah, well, I certainly don't have to worry about getting a used look. Wanda, I think it's really sad to hit the peak of your whole life in junior high school. And Wanda is correct. I like Wanda. I did think her advice was funny there. One night, Charlie is having trouble falling asleep. He thinks he sees a swan outside the house. Sarah had taken him to the lake earlier that day to see the swans that had temporarily migrated there. And he leaves the house at night to go see it, even though he's been told many times to never leave the house alone. He figures that's because of daytime traffic, and at night there wouldn't be any traffic to worry about. Charlie gets lost. The next chapter switches to Sarah's perspective, and she and Aunt Willie realize Charlie is missing. Sarah and her friend Mary go to the lake to look for him. Eventually, Sarah finds him in Irvine, and they go home. Along the way, they see the swans fly back home. The end. This is a good book for the target audience. Their reading level is 4.9. And the sticker on the back of it, I got a school copy. It tells me this is worth four accelerated reader points. The best part by far was the characterization of Sarah. I thought the author painted a great impression of an insecure young teen looking for her place in the world. She was a much less whiny version of Mallory Pike. She had all of the insecurity with none of the complaining about being 11. Probably because she wasn't 11, but had... Anne Martin and her ghostwriters characterized Mallory as well as Betsy Byers did with Sarah, I think she would have been a much more popular character in that series. In terms of pacing on this book, a solid half of it is dedicated to the search for Charlie, which does make that half repetitive. The entire story is only two days long, and I'm perfectly fine with that, but I would have liked to hear from more characters. It's, it's either from Charlie's perspective or from Sarah's, and all we know about the other characters is what those two tell us, primarily what Sarah tells us. Even the, the chapters from Charlie's perspective were third person limited, so all we really knew was that he was lost. I probably would have made those first person. A lot of readers on Goodreads complained about the title, noting that the swans are only in the pond for a few days. And they're not wrong. Maybe a better title would be The Week of the Swans or Swand Pond. I don't know. I'm making fun of it at this point. This is, in essence, another story of a child growing up. What makes this one different is that Sarah's growth was all emotional as opposed to age-based. It was a solid choice for the Newberry. There were three honor books this year. I have not read any of them. And the next winner book is Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. I read it. It's adorable. I'll get it reviewed soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.